Right, so starting with our topic for today, which is rate of reactions. So when we are going to talk about reactions, what we have to basically go over is we have to study the factors that are actually going to affect the rate of reaction. So what factors are we make a reaction go faster or what factors will make a reaction, for example, go slower? So in this chapter, you have to know your different factors. How are they going to affect the rate of reaction? And also experiments. What experiments can we perform to actually measure what the rate of reaction is? So when we talk about factors that are affecting the rate of reaction, there are five factors. One is the surface area of the reactants. So what is the surface area? The concentration of the reactants and the pressure of the gas. The temperature light and whether we are using catalyst or not. Now, before we actually get into the factors, we have to understand uh, a certain theory that we call the collision theory. So the collision theory actually explains how a reaction takes place. So, so far, you know, we have done different reactions. For example, we have done that sodium, when we add it to water, it will give you sodium hydroxide or we have done different acid basis experiments as well. So we know, for example, that we will add sodium chloride to, uh, to sulfuric acid, we get sodium sulfate and uh, other compounds water. So when we are talking about uh, these reactions, how are these reactions actually taking place? The way these reactions are actually taking place is that we have our reactants and the there are particles of the reactant, whether they are in ionic form, whether they are in molecular form, whatever the compound is, you're going to have particles of your reactant. And these reactant particles are going to collide with each other. They're going to bump into each other. And as they're going to bump into each other, that is going to allow your reactant to turn into product. Now, when we talk about collision, not every collision is actually going to be successful. Not every collision will result in the reactant turning into product. Only those collisions where particles have activation energy, only those collisions in which the particles have the required activation energy will we have a successful collision in which the reactant will turn into product. Yeah, uh, your, that is why when we uh, talk about activation energy, activation energy is the minimum amount of energy needed to have a successful collision. So the minimum amount of energy we need to have a successful collision that is known as activation energy. And only those collisions in which the activation energy is there, in which the particles have that minimum energy, only in those collisions are you going to end up seeing a successful collision and you will see the reaction going forward. So what we need to do is, is to make any reaction go faster, I need to increase the amount of successful collisions. The greater the number of successful collisions, the greater the rate of the reaction, the faster the reaction is going to be. Okay. So whenever we are going to talk about our factors, we're going to talk about in terms of successful collisions. One of the factors that we need to talk about is surface area, right? Surface yes. area is, uh, we already have a good enough idea of what the surface area does. Greater the surface area, greater the surface area, greater the number of collisions taking place. So greater the surface area, greater your number of collisions taking place. And greater the number of collisions, the more chances there are oh, that success. the collisions will be, sorry? That's well. Collisions yeah. will be successful. Yeah, the, the the greater number of collisions there are, more chances that the collisions will be successful. So greater the number of collisions, more chances that the collisions are likely to be successful. And that is how it increases the rate of reaction. So greater the surface area, faster your rate of reaction. And it is uh, simply because when you have more surface area, there is more collisions taking place. More collisions mean increased chances of having successful collision which increases the rate of reaction. So when we're going to talk about our surface area, how can we experiment or how can we actually do our experiments to show this 
to show that effective surface area. So one thing you can do is, for example, in the in the example given to us over here, we have limestone. Limestone is, by the way, calcium carbonate. Sorry. Limestone, by the way, is calcium carbonate. So calcium carbonate is our limestone. And in one situation, we have calcium carbonate in the form of we have calcium carbonate in the form of a lump. Like we literally have like just one piece of calcium carbonate. And in the other situation, we have calcium carbonate in form of powder. Yeah, in the form of a powder. So powder is going to have greater surface area. And you can perform your experiment by simply looking at the amount of carbon dioxide gas that is being produced. So there are two ways you can do Either you can do one way that you can do this is that you can place your reaction, your mixture on a measuring balance, on a mass balance, and measure the loss in mass. In this reaction, what is happening? You are reacting hydrochloric acid with calcium carbonate. So you are making calcium chloride, which is a solution, carbon dioxide, and water. Carbon dioxide is a gas. So one way of performing the experiment is that you measure the loss in mass. Why will the mass be decreasing? Because, because carbon of dioxide. Of, uh, carbon dioxide. Yes, because carbon dioxide is being lost. Since carbon dioxide is being lost, your um, mass is going to be decreasing. And you can go ahead and plot your graph for the loss of mass uh, on the y-axis and your time on the x-axis. So what you will observe is that the loss of mass, you lose more mass when you have powdered limestone compared to lumps. So powdered limestone, why? Because powdered limestone is, of course, going to have greater surface area. So faster rate of reaction. So an increase in the surface area results in increase in the number of collision, which increases the number of successful collisions, which causes an increase in rate of reaction. Another way you could do the same experiment, by the way, just letting you know, for the sake of when you're doing your past papers, you can also collect the oxygen, uh, the carbon dioxide. You don't have to uh, uh, directly use mass as well. You could also collect the carbon dioxide gas and then put volume of carbon dioxide gas on the y-axis. So you will see that the volume of carbon dioxide gas is going to increase. So you can have a setup like this, one minute. This would be your setup like this. In it, you would attach it to a gas syringe. And what you could do is, is in this over here, in the gas syringe, you could collect the carbon dioxide gas and note down the volume of carbon dioxide gas and then plot your graph. So on the, uh, on the uh, what do you call it? On the um, y-axis, you could write down volume of carbon dioxide gas and on the x-axis, you could write down the time. So again, you will see a similar result. You will see, so one thing you will observe is this. The final loss in mass or the final amount of carbon dioxide in both will be the same. Whether you're taking powdered limestone or whether you're taking lumps of limestone, it will be the same as long as you're taking the same number of moles, right? As long as the number of moles of limestone are the same, as long as number of moles of calcium carbonate are the same. So whether it is in powder form or lump forms or whatever, the final volume will be the same. It is just that uh, in the powdered limestone, you are reaching the value of final uh, final value or reaching the final volume of carbon dioxide much quicker. In the situation where you are dealing with lumps of limestone, you are reaching your same final value, but you are reaching it much later. So that is what you will observe, that increasing the surface area will not increase the total volume of the product or it will not increase the loss in mass. The it would just happen faster. It would just happen different times. 
uh, sorry, can you repeat it again? It would just take place in different times. Yeah, exactly. It would change time. Exactly, exactly. So your in your powdered limestone, the reaction is completing faster. So you're ending up with the maximum value. Maximum value was, for example, two. So you're just reaching there faster. Over here in the lumps, you're reaching it slower. Another thing you will notice is the initial portion of the graph, right? The initial portion of the graph is very steep. So at the start, the graph is very steep and then it slowly starts to become flatter and flatter and flatter and flatter until it becomes completely flat. So the reason the initial portion of the graph is very steep is because you have a lot of reactant. There is a lot of reactant available at the start. Since there is a lot of reactant available at the start, there will be more collisions taking place and there is going to be more chances that you will have a successful collision. As the time is going to pass, you are going to see that your curve is going to become flatter. Why? Because at this point, you have less um, what do you call it? You have uh, less reactant available. So less collisions are taking place. That is why initially the rate of reaction is very high. The initial rate of reaction is very high. After that, the rate of reaction falls because the reactant is starting to decrease. And eventually at one point, all of the reactant will turn into product, at which point you will have a completely flat line. Now, oftentimes they're going to ask you to use these graphs to find out the initial rate of reaction. They will say calculate the initial rate of reaction. So the way you will calculate the initial rate of reaction is you will make a tangent. Do you know what is a tangent? This In is a tangent. Okay. Okay, it is a straight line. So it is a straight line that we draw since this is a curve. So whenever you have a curve, basically we can find, we can do it by finding out gradient of the line. That is what we have to do. We have to find out gradient of the line. Oftentimes, now when we have a straight line, it is easy to uh, draw, find out the gradient. But when you have a curve, then you have a problem. How do I find out the gradient? This is not a straight line, this is a curve. So then you make a tangent and a tangent is simply a straight line that will touch the curve at only one point. So it will touch your curve at only one point and you will make a tangent and then you measure the gradient of the tangent. That's it. That will give you the rate of reaction. Uh, so when we do questions about this, when we practice questions related to this, we will go over this in more detail, how you can actually do it. Okay. Now, another factor that we have is concentration. Now, when we are talking about concentration, the greater the concentration, the faster your rate of reaction, which makes sense as well. Greater the concentration, more uh, collisions are going to be taking place, which will increase the number of successful collisions, which is going to end up increasing the rate of reaction. Now, when we talk about it, what experiment can we do to actually observe it? Or what experiment can be done that will actually let you see the effect of concentration? So we have this particular uh, experiment over here. We have a compound that we call sodium thiosulfate. You don't have to learn this, uh, uh, the formula and all. This is normally given in the question. You have sodium thiosulfate, and when you react it with hydrochloric acid, you get sodium chloride, sulfur, sulfur dioxide, and water. So what happens is that initially the mixture is colorless. So sodium thiosulfate is colorless. When the reaction takes place, sulfur is formed, and sulfur has a yellow color. So the appearance of the yellow cover color is what we use for our experiment. So this is basically what it looks like. We, at the very start, we uh, make a cross on a piece of paper. And on top of the cross, we place our beaker, okay? In the beaker, we will add our reactant, sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid. After that, we are going to go ahead and we are going to um, note down how much time it took for the yellow color to appear. So the yellow color is appearing because of sulfur. So as the reaction will proceed, as the reaction will proceed, what are we going to do? As the reaction will proceed, the yellow uh, the yellow color will appear. And eventually the, the yellow color... Sorry? 
and the cross will disappear like from our yep, side exactly exactly the cross will disappear so you will note down how much time it took for the cross to disappear then you will change the concentration then you will use a higher concentration of sodium thiosulfate and repeat the experiment so you will keep on changing the concentrations of sodium thiosulfate and repeat the experiment and you will end up seeing a graph like this so you will see as the concentration is increasing the time taken for the cross to disappear is decreasing. So initially, for example, it was taking uh, around 80 seconds. So after that, it was taking around 40 seconds, right? So that is what you're going to observe. And if you make a graph, so on this side, you were putting time, okay? And then on the x-axis, it was concentration. On the x-axis, if you keep the concentration, but you change the y-axis from time, to rate. So you change the x-axis from time to rate. So you will see that as the concentration increases, the rate of reaction also increases and that they are going to be, uh, it's going to be a linear relationship. So that is the effect of concentration. So uh, when we are talking about finding out the rate of reaction, all we have to do is if you want to find out the rate of reaction, just do one upon time, okay? Just do one upon time and that generally gives you the rate of reaction. So uh, remember this, the more uh, um, in a concentrated solution, there are more particles. Since there are more particles in a concentrated solution, there are going to be more collisions taking place. Since there are going to be more collisions taking place, there is greater chance that there are going to be successful collisions in which the particles have the sufficient energy to, or they have the required activation energy. And as a result, the rate of reaction is going to increase. Why? Because there are more particles. That is why. So in concentration, what is the logic? There are more particles per volume. So since there are more particles per volume, more collisions are going to be taking place. There are more chances that the molecules will have the required activation energy for the react for there to be successful collisions. And that is why the rate of reaction is going to increase. All clear? Yes. All right. Now let's talk about temperature. So when you talk about temperature, we will repeat the same experiment, the one with sodium, sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid. So the same experiment with the cross, uh, with the cross disappearing. So we were wrote, noting down the time taken for the cross to disappear. So we are doing the same experiment, but instead of changing the concentration, we are increasing the temperature. So what you will observe is that as we increase the temperature, the time taken for the reaction to complete decreases. So the time will decrease. The reaction will need less time to complete as our temperature is going to increase. Or if I make a graph with rate of reaction, if I make a graph of rate of reaction and temperature, I will see a straight line like this. As the temperature increases, the rate of reaction increases. Okay, yes. As the temperature increases, the time taken to complete the reaction decreases. Decrease. Why does this happen? The reason it happens is because your uh, when you are providing increasing the temperature, you are providing more heat energy the heat energy turns into kinetic energy. So the particles are going to have greater kinetic energy. Since and they they're going to have, Sorry? And they will like uh, move around more. Yeah, so. exactly. Since they will have more kinetic energy, they will start to move faster. When they will move faster, there will be more collisions taking place. And there is greater chance that they will have the activation energy needed to have successful collisions. And since there will be more successful collisions, this will cause an increase in rate of reaction. Yeah. Good. Then we have uh, something known as light. Light is also known to increase the rate of reaction. A big example of this is photosynthesis. 
in photosynthesis when you're going to look into it your light is present which is responsible for increasing the rate of reaction so those type of reactions which use light those kind of reactions which use light we call them photochemical reactions so this is certain type of reaction not all reactions only those reactions that use light like photosynthesis only in those situations is light going to have an effect in a normal reaction where light does not have any involvement you will not observe anything so this is a this is something that you will only see in very special scenarios so generally speaking what is going to happen that when your particles are going to absorb light energy the energy can be used to break the bonds and overcoming the activation energy and causing a chemical reaction to occur faster so that is what happens that the particles will absorb the light energy they will get the required activation energy they will get the minimum energy they need as a result they will get the activation energy to break the bonds and that makes the chemical reaction go faster this is for example what you would see when you are talking about photosynthesis so in photosynthesis basically the light energy is used to break down the bonds it is used to break down the bonds so that your uh, carbon dioxide and water can be converted into glucose and oxygen so that is why light energy is necessary it breaks down the bonds it breaks down the bonds and by breaking down the bonds it basically allows the reaction to go faster okay let's go ahead and just go over certain experiments that we need to know so let's go ahead and do an experiment uh, between hydrochloric acid and our marble chips right so we have a setup like this where we have our marble chips and we have our dilute hydrochloric acid so we will measure the mass at the start we will measure the mass at the start what is the mass at the start of the reaction after that we will add our hydrochloric acid to the beaker we will put a cotton uh, cotton piece at the top and then we are going to let the reaction happen as the reaction is going to happen carbon dioxide gas is going to be produced and your volume is going to start to decrease the volume is going to start to decrease so you can go ahead and simply plot your graph so you can write down the time over here on the x axis and on the y axis you can write down mass of carbon dioxide produced it is easy to calculate the mass of carbon dioxide produced you just need to do uh, initial mass minus final mass so if the initial mass for example was 0 and the final mass was minus 0.74 so you can just subtract the two and get find out what is the mass of carbon dioxide right so you can take initial mass and subtract the final mass from it to find out the mass of carbon dioxide and then you can plot it over here again you're going to see a graph like this initially it's going to be very steep because initially the rate of reaction is going to be high why because you have greater number of reactants available more reactants available so more reactant particles are there more collisions are going to take place and as a result rate of reaction increases then slowly your graph is going to become less and less steep it's going to start to become more flat because the reaction is slowing down and eventually it's going to become completely horizontal showing that the reaction has stopped okay we have already done a uh, surface area and we have done the uh, concentration of acid as well yes. we have done temperature okay now we need to go over catalyst okay so when we are talking about catalyst uh, catalyst are substances that increase the rate of reaction without taking part in the reaction or without undergoing any chemical change 
So they increase the rate without of reaction. Sorry? Without being used up, can we say that? Yeah, without being used up, without undergoing any chemical change and or uh, without uh, basically taking part in the chemical reaction. So, for example, if I were to give you an example, um, one aware, okay, so just letting you know, uh, catalyst generally our transition metals. So, if you've done periodic table, you must have studied that group one is your alkali metals, group two yes. is your earth alkali metals, and then group seven are your halogens, group eight are your noble gases, and then in the middle, we have transition elements. So transition elements are generally the ones that we use as catalyst. That is one of their properties, unique properties, that you can use transition metals as catalyst. So for example, magnesium oxide. Ma uh, uh, magnes is a magnes is a transition element. So you can use magnesium oxide to increase the uh, add to act as a catalyst. So uh, what is going to happen that uh, when you are going to talk about it, one minute, how does a catalyst actually increase the rate of reaction? How is a catalyst going to do its job? Because it is not taking part in the chemical reaction. It is not undergoing any chemical alteration. So how is it increasing the rate of reaction? A catalyst does not increase the number of collisions. Remember that. For catalyst, you will never say that catalyst increases the number of collision. Catalyst does not increase the number of collision. What does catalyst actually do? The catalyst lowers the activation energy. It provides an alternative route. Alternative route. You don't have to go into details of it. You just have to remember that it provides an alternative route that has less activation energy. So it lowers the activation energy. So since the activation energy is low, what is going to happen? More particles will have the required energy. So if initially, for example, the minimum required energy was 10 joules, for example, okay? So minimum required energy was 10 joules. Yeah, sorry? Uh, with, with, a, with, a with a catalyst, we'll have five joules. Yeah, exactly. So catalyst will make it five joules. So what is going to happen? It's not that it's going to increase the number of collision. It will lower the amount of energy. So first, the particles needed to have at least 10 joules to have a successful collision. But now they need only five joules. So because of that, there will be more chances of successful collisions. And as a result, the rate of reaction increases. And we have to so that, provide less energy to the for the reaction. Yes, exactly. So that is what your catalyst actually does. So um, when you're going to talk about it, chemists have found out a small amount of catalyst will produce a large amount of chemical change. So even a small amount, you add a little bit of it, it gives you a very, uh, a very high increase in the rate of reaction. Chemic catalysts remain unchanged chemically but they can change physically. So chemically, for example, if I'm using iron, it will stay iron. It will not turn into any other compound, but they can change physically. For example, if I was putting a lump of iron, that can turn into a powder. So physically, they can change. They can go from lump to powder, but chemically, it will stay iron. The formula will not change. And catalysts are specific to particular chemical reactions. So to particular chemical reactions, your catalysts are specific. And I have put a table over here. You can just learn this table just so if they give you any one mark question, identify the catalyst. So you can just identify that. But these are all specific topics. So whenever in your entire course, in your whenever later on in your syllabus, whenever you do these topics, so you will study all of these in great detail. But generally just letting you know, the names of the catalyst in case you get one mark question or something. Uh, Haber process. Haber process is the process with which we make ammonia. And we will also study a little bit about Haber process when we do our reversible reactions. So we have to do reversible reactions. So when we do that, Haber process, we will study that a bit more. But then you also have a separate topic on it as well. So when you, whenever in your course you do that, you will study it in more detail. So Haber process is the process for manufacturing ammonia and the catalyst we use it is iron. Again, iron is a transition metal. 
contact process is the process for making sulfuric acid and the catalyst we use for it is vanadium oxide these two are very common they ask you about paper process and car uh, contact process very commonly All right, so basically that is what you had to do in the topic of your rate of reaction. So now uh, give me a minute, let me share some questions with you and let's go over some past paper question topics. All right, go ahead, take a uh, look at the question. Give the question a read first, and then whenever you are done, go ahead and try to solve part A. So part A is related to your mole calculation, the titration thing that we have done in assets and bases. Yeah. So it is related to that. So if uh, so, go ahead and give this a uh, try, read the question, and then try to solve for part A1.
there's no information given of sulfur dioxide gas it's okay you have to it's okay you have to find out the mass okay so you have to find out the mass what is the formula of moles that you know in which you have mass mole is equal to mass over mass of one mole yes so that is what you can do mass of one mole you can simply calculate using your periodic table so use that you don't need the information of sulfur dioxide you need mass of one mole and that you can simply find out by using your periodic table Sixty-four. Mm, Sixty-four. Not the answer. I'm talking about the. Oh, the MR of SO two. Yes, yes. <laughs> the MR, the mass of one mole of sulfur dioxide is sixty-four. Correct. I don't know how will you calculate the moles even. Uh, okay, hold it. Let me go back. It's fancy. Mm -hmm. Look, so the way you're going to solve this is, of course, first of all, uh, you are going to find out the number of moles of your um. Sodium thiosulfate. Okay, that's what you have to do. Find out the number of moles of sodium thiosulfate. How will you do that? The concentration is given to you and the volume is given to you. So you can do concentration is equals to moles upon volume and get your answer. Concentration is 0 0.3. The number of moles we don't know. And the volume is 20 centimeter cube. We have to change that into dm cube by dividing it by a thousand. Okay. So to do this, you're going to do uh, 0 
3 multiplied by bracket 20 divided by 1000. So when you do that, you will get your moles as 0 0.006. Now that you have your moles of sodium thiosulfate, you need to figure out what are the moles of sulfur dioxide. So look at the ratio. What is the ratio between sodium thiosulfate and sulfur dioxide? Uh, sorry, Aram, I can't hear you. Okay, uh, so sodium thiosulfate has 0 0.300. Like don't no no look at the equation look at the equation what is the ratio between them what is how how many sodium thiosulfate do you have in the equation one and how many sulfur dioxide do you have one one so that means if the moles of sodium thiosulfate are 0 0.006 the moles of sulfur dioxide will be the same 0 0.006 okay so since the ratio between them is the same, so whatever are the moles of sodium thiosulfate, the moles of sulfur dioxide are going to be similar. They're going to be the same. So now you will use your next formula. Moles is equals to M upon MR, your one mass pole. The number of moles of sulfur dioxide are 0 0.006. We have to find out the mass and the MR you just calculated as 64 from the periodic table. Yeah. So you will multiply this by 64 and you will get your answer as 0 0.38. So 0 0.38 grams is the answer. All right, making sense now? Uh, yes. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank Are you sure? All clear? Um, yeah, uh, yeah. But just one question. Why did you take 20 centimeter cube for the volume? Because in the one minute in the question volume of sodium thiosulfate is 20 centimeter cube concentration is 0 0.3 and volume is 20 that is the value they have given in the question so i just use the volume uh, from the question all right is that making sense okay volume of total like because we want to find no you don't have to use volume of total just the volume of the solution so the 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 solution for which they have given you concentration you use the volume for that solution you don't use total volume you only use the volume for the solution you're talking about so this okay. concentration is not the concentration for everything mixed it is the concentration just for sodium thiosulfate so we use the volume just for sodium thiosulfate Okay. Okay. The solubility. Um. Okay. We uh, don't are not dealing with solubility. Hold on. Take a look at this. She repeats the experiment using the same values and concentration of solution, but at different temperatures. The graph shows her result. The result at 14, 42 is anomalous. Anomalous meaning that it is incorrect. Explain one student, a mistake the student may have made to cause this anomalous result. So you can see this anomalous result over here. What do you think? In this entire experiment, what mistake could she have made that gave her this inaccurate result, this incorrect result? Think of the experiment. If you want to read the experiment, you can read her experiment. She might have incorrectly calculated the time. Yes, she might have incorrectly calculated the time. You can say that she might have started the timer too late. Maybe she started the timer too late. Or too early. Because if you, yeah, because if you look in the question, uh, how do you think, okay, over here, what time do you think it should have, uh, sorry, well, yeah, what time do you think it should have actually been? If we were following the graph, the time should have been around this much, right? 60, 64 or something, right? It should have been 64 seconds if you follow the graph. But she is getting a, a time somewhere around 42. So she is getting less time, which means that she must have started the stopwatch too late. Maybe she started the timer too late. That is why she has she is getting less time 
than the than the actual time or you can even say that the thermometer was inaccurate she did not read the thermometer properly because she's doing an experiment with the temperature right so maybe she did not read the thermometer mm -hmm. correctly okay use the graph to find the time taken for the x to no longer be seen at 35 degrees centigrade so now this you just need to go ahead and take a look at your graph in this situation So just read from the graph. If you read from the graph at 35 degrees centigrade, what do you think should have been the time? Wait, uh, what was the question again? Uh, I'll scroll down. Hey, you. Hey, now you can see the graph and the question. It might be 20 or 19. Yeah, around, I guess 19.5 is probably like around, uh, it's going to be around 19.5, yes. Okay, all right. Now, the student repeats the experiment using nitric acid in place of hydrochloric acid. She records the time for X to no longer be seen, then uses the time to calculate the rate of reaction at each temperature. The graph shows the result she plots. Suggest two reasons why the results are less accurate at higher temperature. So you can see at higher temperatures, she is not getting correct values. Why do you think at higher temperature, she is not possibly getting correct values? What could be the reason for that? Maybe because like the thermometer malfunction, it's not giving the correct value because of uh, the sorry, very can you say it again, Anna? I couldn't hear you. Properly. Maybe because of the very high temperature, the thermometer is not yeah. giving correct values. Or... Okay, why? Why are because of the high temperature are you not getting incorrect values? What do you think? Why? Greater the rate of reaction, what does that mean about the time? If the rate of reaction is great, what does that tell you about the time? The time will uh, decrease. The time will decrease. So one reason can be that the time is so less or the reaction is taking place so fast and the time period is sh so short that it is uh, hard to measure it. Maybe the reaction is taking place so fast and the time period is so short that she is not able to measure it accurately or she's not able to measure it properly because the time period is too short for her right that is one possibility okay. right making sense yeah and the other possibility is what heat loss heat loss is taking place okay heat loss is taking place and because so since the temperature is very high you could be losing a lot of heat Correct? The greater the yeah. amount of temperature, the more heat you lose. So since you're going to be losing a lot more heat, it will be difficult to measure the temperature accurately. So that could be another possible reason. Making sense? Yes. So those could be the two reasons. Now, the student wrote this explanation for the shape of the graph. As the temperature increases, the rate of reaction increases. This is because there are more frequent collisions between the particles of reactant. Use the particle collision theory to explain another more important reason for the increase in rate of reaction.
what do you think what is the what is the explanation i told you if you remember the explanation i told you so the explanation i told you was that when your temperature is going to increase molecules are going to sorry your particles are going to have what more kinetic energy when they're going to have more kinetic energy greater number of particles will have the minimum amount of energy greater number of particles will have the activation energy so more successful collisions will take place and that is why the rate of reaction will increase so that's what you write down over here okay okay another student uses the same reaction to investigate the effect of changing the concentration of sodium thiosulfate solution on the rate of reaction give three variables that the student must control in this investigation to obtain valid results so the second student is now doing an experiment of concentration and rate of reaction so this was he temperature rate of sure reaction that the con he should make sure that the concentration should be same of the two experiments no oh, if the concentration remains the same then how no, I mean do you different. do the experiment yeah it should be different from of the two experiments okay so one thing concentration of sodium thiosulfate will be changing you are that that we already know concentration of sodium thiosulfate you will have to change it otherwise how will you perform the experiment yeah but you also have other reactants over here what about for example hydrochloric acid what will you do about the concentration of hydrochloric acid we could like measure the amount of more measure the yeah, amount. yeah no i'm not saying i'm talking about keeping constant will you change the concentration of hydrochloric acid or will you keep it constant what do you we'll think keep, we'll keep that constant and same yes exactly so when you're saying concentration you have to specify not the concentration of sodium thiosulfate we are changing concentration of sodium thiosulfate otherwise how will we do our experiment it's hydrochloric acid we will keep the concentration of hydrochloric acid constant because the experiment is about sodium thiosulfate so we have to make sure everything remains the same what other thing are you going to control you have to give three things and they go the amount of uh, gas that is being released you can't control the amount of gas being released that is a product you cannot control the product you can only control the reactants or the environment around it you cannot control the product the product is going to depend upon the reaction so you will control the concentration of hcl what is another thing that you can control about the hydrochloric acid if, if the information is there in front of you as well if you just take a look you will control the concentration you will make sure that the concentration of hydrochloric acid is the same what else about hydrochloric acid can you make the same the volume the volume so you will use same volume of hydrochloric acid what else will you keep the same what other factors can you think time. of that you should so, uh time to, you are measuring time how will you find out the rate of reaction without measuring time time is going to depend upon the rate of reaction faster the rate of reaction less time less time you are going to get so time you are um, measuring concentration of sodium thiosulfate that is also something that you are measuring something that you are experimenting on so the things that you're experimenting on you will not keep them constant things that uh, other factors other factors that can affect the rate of reaction they are what you have to keep constant for example hcl hydrochloric acid is not a part of our experiment i mean we don't we don't want to measure it we don't want to you know have any effect on it and we know that hydrochloric acid can have an effect on the rate of reaction so we want to keep this constant because this is not the purpose of our experiment but it can increase or decrease the rate of reaction so we keep the concentration and the volume constant think about another thing the amount of uh Think yeah. about the factors. What factors have a role on the rate of reaction? 
सरफेस एरिया या बट यू डोंट हैव सरफेस एरिया बिकॉज़ देयर बोथ लिक्विड सरफेस एरिया इज फॉर सॉलिड्स व्हाट एल्स टेंपरेचर temperature so you need to keep the temperature constant because if the temperature is not constant that will cause a change in the rate of reaction and our results will not be accurate another thing volume of sodium thiosulfate your experiment is with the concentration so yes you will change the concentration of sodium thiosulfate but everything else should be the same yes everything else should be the same your okay. temperature should be the same your volumes should be the same your uh, environment the environment that you are doing the reaction in that entire environment should be the same okay so you have okay. to make sure so th th that is basically well, you have these control variables we call them control variables so But they if, are like if they're not there that means it can change yes. the experiment yes exactly if you don't control them then they will have an effect on our experiment if we don't control them they will have an effect on our experiment so we want to make sure that when we're doing our experiment uh, if you are doing this experiment concentration and rate of reaction you don't want me to come and say arham uh, how do you know that the result you are getting so you are coming to me and saying this more concentration meant higher rate of reaction you don't want me to come and say how do you know it was not because of the temperature how do you know it was not because of this how do you know it was not because of this so for that what you will do is you will keep everything else constant you will say but miss the temperature was constant the temperature wasn't changing so i know that my result is because of concentration and not because of temperature so as a scientist whenever you're doing an experiment we always try to make sure that only the things we are measuring so over here we are concerned with the concentration and we're concerned with the time time is the rate of reaction these two things are the only things that will change everything else that can possibly affect a reaction anything else that can make a reaction go faster or slower we want to make sure that it stays the same so our experiment is valid it is uh, no one can question it and no one can say how do you know that your result is not because of this so you keep everything constant so when you present your results as a scientist you can confidently say that this is my result and this happened because of this so that is why these variables are known as control variables so only the things that have to be measured or the only the experimental things are the ones we will change concentration we will change and time we will measure other than this every single thing we have to try to keep it as constant as possible so temperature volume concentration of hcl all of this has to be kept constant making sense okay yes okay i'm so we'll stop this over here for today and then we'll